Um, welcome to Western Hemisphere Virtual Symplectic Seminar. We're very happy today to have uh, Noemi Legou uh, telling us about A-infinity category of Lagrangian cobordisms in the symplectization of P times R. Okay, nice. Uh, thanks, thanks for the invitation. I'm uh, very happy to talk to this Western Hemisphere Symplectic Seminar. Um, so I will uh, describe you uh, today how to uh, define the uh, um, A-infinity category for like Lagrangian cobordism in the simplectization of a contact manifold, which will be in this case, the uh, contactization of a Liouville manifold. So uh, as, uh, as I just said, so my contact manifold Y will always be in this talk like contactization of a Liouville manifold. And in this particular case, the red vector field is just DZ. And everywhere in the presentation, when I write lambda, I mean a Legendrian submanifold of Y, so um, n-dimensional uh, submanifold for which the on which the contact form vanishes, and the objects uh, under consideration in this talk are uh, Lagrangian exact Lagrangian cobordism in the symplectization of Y. So these are uh, submanifolds of the symplectization of y, so it's r times y with the two form d exponential t alpha, such so that um, so sigma intersected with minus infinity minus t times y is just a cylinder over lambda minus. Sigma intersected with t plus infinity times y is a cylinder over lambda plus. Uh, do you see when I'm moving, uh, do you see uh, on the screen? Yeah. Yes, that's okay. visible. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> and then, uh, so sigma intercity with minus t, t times y is uh, it's assumed to be compact. So that's just topological uh, restriction. And then we assume that there exists a uh, smooth function f defined on sigma, uh, so that uh, this f is the primitive of uh, the one form exponential t alpha restricted to sigma. And we assume that also f is constant on the cylindrical ends. Uh, I, what I mean globally constant, it's constant on any connected component of the ends. Um, so, okay, we denote it uh, this way. And when the negative end is empty, it's a, we call it a Lagrangian filling. So what are the, the goals of this talk today is to take uh, two, uh, two Lagrangian cobordism, right? that are transverse and to define a Fleur complex associated to this pair of cobordism that I will denote CTH plus sigma zero, sigma one for Cthulhu plus. Then um, once, so I will define this complex and give you some, a few properties maybe. And then once I have this complex, I want to define a, a product structure and some higher order uh, operation. And um, the next step is like uh, to take one cobordism and a like a special perturbation of this cobordism, so uh, special sigma one, and exhibit like uh, exhibit the existence of a continuation element, so some uh, special type of generator. And with with this uh, with all those operations and those continuation element, define an infinity category via localization. Okay, so, uh, but uh, considering um, exact, like non-compact, exact Lagrangian uh, so manifolds and um, associate to them like a Fleur complex, it has okay, already been studied a lot, but mostly in, uh, in the Liouville, Liouville manifolds or Liouville cobordism with a filling. So I just recall a few names here, but I, I'm probably forgetting a lot of people and I'm sorry. <laughs> But just um, so, of course, uh, like the work of Abu Zaid Seidel, Abu Zaid, for to define the rap category, like with, like when I write with Hamiltonian, I mean um, uh, the maps are counting uh, solutions of the perturbed Cauchy Riemann equation, perturbed with a Hamiltonian term, and this for Lagrangian in Liouville domains, and more recently by Ganatrapard and Shende for Liouville sectors. And there is also work of Celia Bakovanchea defining symplectic homologic groups 
for uh, in the Liouville cobordism, uh, admitting a feeling. So the negative end of the cobordism is uh, fillable by a, a Liouville manifold. And um, and this is also with uh, with the Hamiltonian perturbation term. And but I should also mention that uh, economically, that in the appendix of, of the paper duality for Lagrangian and Legendrian, they define the wrap flow cohomology groups um, without without Hamiltonian perturbation. And I mean, so counting uh, counting solution of the non perturb Cauchy Riemann equation. So just with like those SFT techniques. Um, and I should, uh, I, I should also mention um, some work in progress of Ganatra, Gao, and Venkatesh um, defining the Rab Rabinovitz wrapped or wrapped Rabinovitz Fouquet category. In, so it's also in, in the case of Liouville cobordism, admitting a feeling. Um, so, okay, in the case I consider here, I will. Um, I will have some Liouville cobordism, but it will be a trivial one because it's just the simplectization of a contact manifold. And I will not consider, when I write no Hamiltonian, I mean, I will just consider um, honest SFT curves, like no Hamiltonian perturbation. Um, and so we don't, we do not assume in, in, this, uh, in this talk that the negative end of my Liouville cobordism, which, which is just why here, admit uh, Liouville filling, but to, in some sense, to compensate this, we will need, we will need some augmentation of uh, the legendary and negative ends of the cobordism to, in some sense, get rid of some breakings of pseudo-holomorphic disks. So I, will, I will try to explain a, a little bit uh, later what I mean by this. Um, and, okay, in two lines, just a uh, I'm sorry because it's probably useless. It's useless for people who know what what is an augmentation, and it's maybe not super useful for people who don't know what are augmentation. But if I can re, uh, recall in two lines, the augmentation are like uh, we can see that some algebraic tools that are um, some algebra maps from the Chikanov Eliasberg DGA of Legendrian to Z2. So algebra map satisfying epsilon composed with the differential equals zero. But then of course I have not defined what is the chicken of Eliasberg DGA uh, of lambda, but this A lambda is an algebra generated by rep chords of lambda. So trajectories of the rep vector field starting and ending on lambda. And the differential, the differential of a generator so of one chord is defined by counting pseudolomorphic disk with boundary on R times lambda and asymptotic to uh, some, like positively asymptotic to gamma and negatively asymptotic to a certain number of, um, of rep chords. Okay, so that's, and, and that's the definition of an augmentation once we have this DGA. So that's an algebraic definition, but it turns out that if, um, if my Legendrian lambda admits a feeling then it, uh, this feeling induces an augmentation, which is uh, defined on red chords by counting pseudomorphic half planes with boundary on the feeling. So this is uh, um, due to Ecol on Kalman. Okay, so I need, I need those augmentation. Um, okay, so that's for the plan of the talk. Uh, by the way, if you have any question, don't hesitate to stop me and speak. Um, okay, so um, now, so what uh, what do I want to do? I want to take two transverse exact Lagrangian cobordism, um, and so and I will always assume now that the uh, Legendrian manifold in the negative end uh, admit augmentations, and so associating a floor complex to two such cobordism is not. It has already been done. Uh, by Chantraine, Dimitro Glorizel, Guigini, and Golovko. They have defined uh, the Cthulhu complex, which, is the, uh, which has like three different types of generators once we take uh, those two, two transverse cobordism. The generators are like the rep chords from lambda one plus two lambda zero plus. So it's like from one to zero. And then the intersection points between 
sigma zero and sigma one, and the red chords from lambda one minus to lambda zero minus. So that's for the generators, and I will not describe the full differential now because then you might be confused by the other complex uh, just after that. But the differential is uh, defined by a count of pseudomorphic disks with boundary on the cobordism and asymptotics to uh, red chords or intersection points of, uh, like of the generators. So for example, oh yeah, I should write, oh, that's the only formula I will write for this presentation because it's not so nice to read. But um, here, for example, it's one component of the differential from this uh, from chords in the negative end to chord in the positive end. So I take as input a chord in the negative end and the, the differential, like the, um, the component of the differential um, that uh, takes us, gives that output a chord in the positive end is, is defined by the sum over all chords in the positive end and the sum over all positive uh, uh, all, uh, sorry, defined by the sum over all pure red chords in lambda one, uh, in lambda zero minus and lambda one minus. So delta zero and delta one are words of red chords of lambda zero minus and words of red chords of lambda one minus. And then I count rigid disk like this with boundary on sigma zero and sigma one. And then then I use the augmentation to forget about uh, the pure red chords in some sense. So if I apply the augmentation, this just becomes um, coefficient in Z2. Okay, so from now on, I will just draw my curves all the time like this on the right part. I will, but uh, implicitly there will always be potentially a lot, like a, or a certain number of asymptotics to pure red chords. I will not draw it anymore. Okay, so that's so that's uh, the generators of the Cthulhu complex defined previously, uh, and now the complex I will define here is uh, is slightly different. But this orange part is still the same; like it's still generated by intersection points between the cobordism and. Um, red chords from lambda one minus to lambda zero minus, but now the generators in the positive end change direction. I will not take chords from lambda one to lambda zero, but I take chords from lambda zero to lambda one. Then um, the differential is uh, a matrix defined uh, like, a, which looks like this. It's a cone, it's a cone of this black map. Um, I will, so okay, I, I show you, um, so those, those, um, those maps are defined again by a count of pseudolomorphic disks with boundary on the cobordism and asymptotic to the different uh, generators as follows. So for example, this map uh, delta plus is defined, so it's a map from the blue um, blue component to itself, and it's defined by taking as input a positive, uh, like a positive, uh, it's a, the input would be a positive asymptotic, like a red chord, which is a positive asymptotic, and it spits out like an, um, a red chord in the positive end, which will be a negative asymptotic. So for, in some sense, like those, uh, the count of such uh, curves with potentially a lot of pure red chords is um, is the differential of the bilinearized Legendrian contact homology. So it's going from top to bottom, and it's with boundary on R time boundary on the um, cylindrical end, positive cylindrical end. Then this D zero plus takes as input. Uh, a chord in the positive end and as output an intersection point. And then this term, this composition um, is, is like, uh, it's the map going from the blue to the chord in the, in the negative end. So it takes as input a chord in the positive end. Then 
this uh, this um, this strip here contributes to the, the map that I call lambda sigma. So it it takes a generator here and associates um, associate a code from lambda zero minus to lambda one minus, uh, which is a negative asymptotic. So this code is not in the complex, so that's why um, I had this banana banana map that will give back a chord in the in the good direction which will be a chord from lambda one minus to lambda zero minus and this chord is in the complex so it's the same from this map here taking uh, as input an intersection point then i apply this uh, delta delta map that will give the, a chord from lambda zero minus to lambda one minus and then i add this banana to give a chord which is in the complex that D00 is just a standard flow strip. Then this, uh, okay, D0 minus uh, map and this B minus this banana map also taking a generator here. And uh, as output, we have a chord which is positive asymptotic and going from lambda one minus to lambda zero minus. Uh, and, and this is the map, this is the differential of the bilinearized Legendrian contact Co-homology of the negative end, restricted to mixed uh, mixed rep code. Okay, so that's uh, for uh, the definition of the differential, and I will denote m1 plus, m10, and m1 minus the different components depending on um, the output of the map. Okay, this this will have output in the blue blue component, etc. Okay, so maybe uh, some like two very easy examples of this complex, like when, when I take some very particular type of cobordism, it simplifies a lot. For example, if I take lambda zero Legendrian in, uh, let's say, R R2 n plus one, and I take lambda one to be um, a most perturbation of a very uh, large push off of lambda zero in the positive uh, rep direction, then what are the generators of the complex? In this case, it's very simple. It's just the chords from uh, lambda zero to lambda one. In any case, there are no chords from lambda one to lambda zero and no intersection points. So I just have those generators. And then the differential restricts just to this, um, to this delta plus, which is the differential of the bilinearized Legendrian contact homology complex. So it's going from top to bottom. And it's it's actually this complex is actually the complex of the of the two copy of uh, of Legendrian um, like studied in uh, in the duality exact sequence paper of Econ Etnayer and Sabloff. And then another example, a bit, uh, like the same type of example, is uh, if I take the zero section in a in a jet space and I take lambda one to be the perturbation of a very small push off of lambda zero in the, um, well, of a small push off of lambda zero in the positive red direction by a Morse function F, then the generators of the complex are again, uh, just the, the chords from lambda zero to lambda one. And, and the, the differential is also this delta plus map. And in this case, the complex is canonic, canonically identified with the most complex of the function f. Okay. So now, um, again, I will give you, I will not uh, prove everything, but I'll just give you some um, explanation about why this is a differential, but it's the usual argument. We take, um, we consider one uh, dimensional uh, moduli space and we look at uh, broken broken curves arising at the boundary of the compactification and in this case if i take this uh, floor strip there are like several possible breakings so uh, this curve like could break on an intersection point but now as i have like a non non empty non empty negative end for the cobordism it could break in such a, such a configuration with a banana here. 
And it could actually break in some other configuration like this. On the, it could break on a pure red cord here and I would have this um, half pane here. Um, but why I put across, I put uh, like, um, because this configuration will actually cancel with some other configuration. What I mean is that I told you, uh, I draw all my curves like this now, but every time there could be a lot of pure red cord asymptotic. So in particular, when I define, uh, so this when it's index zero, it's a term, it's, a, it's some curves like uh, contributing to one term of the differential, but it's not the only one contributing to the boundary of, uh, of X. There is also, uh, also this one, when I, when I do the sum over some pure red cords, so this is also a curve contributing to the differential of X if it's index zero. So it means that when I want to prove that M1 square equals zero, I also have to look at one parameter families of curves like this. And how can it break? It can break on some intersection point again. It could break on some, with some, giving some banana shape like this with some pure red cord asymptotics. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But in particular, it will also break. It could also break on some pure red cord like this. And then I continue. If I take, if I look at those configuration, uh, like one parameter family of curves like this, it could break in such uh, in such a pseudomorphic building. But then, so now I looked at, at all those. Uh, all those pseudo-holomorphic building when it breaks exactly on, on this chord, on this chord, on this pure chord gamma. Then, then, you can, then it, it turns out that this, uh, this configuration here, if I look all what is in the uh, negative, negative end, this, this term plus this term plus these curves, et cetera, et cetera, they actually contribute to the differential of gamma in the in the chicken of Eliasberg DGA of the, of the Legendrian in the negative end, but then I told you that in all the all the pure red cords I used the augmentation to 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 turn them into a, a coefficient in Z two, but then I know that by definition of an augmentation augmentation composed with the differential equals zero, so it means that this term all those terms will just cancel uh, they will just contribute zero to all those breaking. So that's why I can forget about them, thanks to the augmentation. And then what remains, one, one, once I cancel all of this, it remains exactly the terms. So D00 is this one, and, and this one is uh, D0 minus composed with B minus composed with the delta sigma of X. And this is one, uh, one part, one component of M1 composed with M1 equals zero. Okay, and then etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, to prove that uh, m1 square equals zero, it's just the same thing for. Uh, we just have to study all the different types of pseudomorphic uh, curves. And so another, so now now that we have this complex, we can ask uh, whether it is acyclic or not. Um, and it is actually the case if. If lambda, if the pair lambda zero minus lambda one minus, uh, if the two Legendrian are horizontally displaceable, or if the pair lambda zero plus lambda one minus is horizontally displaceable. So what I mean by this is, I mean that I can take, so if lambda zero minus lambda one minus are horizontally displaceable, I mean that I can apply some Legendrian isotopy to one of them in, in uh, such a way that there are no, no red cords anymore from lambda zero to lambda one or from lambda one to lambda zero. There are no cords anymore between, between them. So if that's the case, then the complex is acyclic. So in order to, to prove this, we need um, to understand how the com this complex behaves in some sense under concatenation of cobordism. So um, if I have, so if I have one cobordism from lambda zero minus to lambda zero and another cobordism from lambda zero to lambda zero plus, I can concatenate them along this, along lambda zero with like some parameter here. 
And then I, give, I get one covariant from lambda zero minus to lambda zero plus. And if I take a pair of such cobordism, I can define a complex, like a pair of, uh, assuming it's transverse, I define a complex which will be generated by, by red cords from lambda zero plus to lambda one plus, intersection points between W zero and W one, intersection points between V zero and V one, and red cords from lambda one minus to lambda zero minus, and again, the differential will be defined by counting a certain number of pseudomorphic disks in the, with boundary on, on the scoboardism. So I will not write a very big a four times four matrix now, but I'll just give you one, be one example. If I take one generator in this, in the positive end, so a code from lambda zero plus to lambda one plus, then the differential is defined by counting uh, all those different types of curve. Um, yes, so yeah, it's, then there are like, um, yeah, I don't, maybe I don't want to say anything more with this. Um, so we have this complex and then uh, it turns out that there are some transfer maps between the complex of the uh, of the concatenation and the complex uh, between the two cobordism of the on, on the top and there are, there is also another transfer map from the complex of the concatenated cobordism to the complex of the cobordism in the bottom and these maps are, are defined as follows maybe Okay, it's a bit, uh, it's just formulas. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't make sense to write it here. This, um, this BV is just a, it's the banana in the cobordism V and this delta W is the delta map in the cobordism uh, W, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's defined like this on the blue part of the complex and it's defined by BV on the orange part of the complex. And here this delta map is just a, is the delta map on the blue part and it's just the identity on the on the orange part. But we have those maps and we can, again, by studying um, the boundary of the compactification of some pseudomorphic disk, we can prove that those maps are actually chain maps. And when we have those chain maps, it's just, a, I mean, it's just a formula, but I kind of like this formula. It's a nice formula, I think, to diff, to, describe the, the differential of the concatenation of two cobordism by the differential of the cobordism at the top and the differential of the cobordism of the pair of cobordism in the bottom and with the, those transfer maps. So when I write M1 W plus zero, it means, so it means the plus component of the differential of the complex of W1 W, uh, W0 W1 plus the zero component, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, I can just, uh, I drew, I drew um, it's the same picture as before, like that's the uh, differential applied to a chord in a positive end. And, um, and uh, the components are as follows, like, but maybe, it, maybe it's not, maybe it's not super clear. But it's just a formula, and anyway, maybe I just go on. <laughs> um, so we have this complex uh, of the concatenation and those transfer maps in between, going from the big complex to the smaller complex. And now we can prove uh, now we can prove the acyclicity of the Cthulhu complex if, let's say, we assume that the Legendrian in the negative end are horizontally displaceable. So how do we proceed? I just make a lot of pictures and no formula, but I think it's easier to understand like this. So uh, what do I do? I take my uh, I, I take my pair of cobordism sigma zero sigma one, and I wrap uh, I wrap the positive end of sigma one in the negative rep direction. But and then I can prove like uh, when I do this wrapping of this cylindrical positive end. I can prove that actually the, the transfer map going so from the big from the complex of the concatenation 
to uh, this the complex associated to sigma zero sigma one this uh, underwrapping this um, transfer map is an isomorphism so i get an isomorphism of complexes here then again i so I, then i wrap the negative end and again i can prove that the complex are still isomorphic and when I wrap the positive end like this and the negative end like this, the only generators remaining in the complex are the intersection points, like uh, the intersection points here in this compact part. I don't have rep cause generators anymore. And so then I use by compactly supported Hamiltonian isotopy, I just push all the all the intersection points in this negative cylindrical end. So then I get that this complex is um, homotopic to the complex of the pair of the pair R times lambda zero minus, which is V zero here. V zero is just cylinder, trivial cylinder, and V one prime, which is a wrapping of uh, of a trivial cylinder. And then, and then what uh, do I have? No, I mean there's a question from Mohammed. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any chat so yet. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I think in the chat there was just a request to ask a question. Actually. Sorry, I, I would normally type, but I can't. Um, can I in this story of concatenation? Yeah. Is there some condition about the compatibility of the augmentation with with the with the thing that you're concatenating? Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay. Uh, uh, um, Compatibility. I didn't say. Oh yeah, I should say. I should have said this. That uh, I mean, I always. I'm always using. I mean, what do you mean compatibility? If I if I take some augmentation in the negative end, yes. I take. Uh, then I always take. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I the the augmentation that I take for the for the Legendrian, uh, let's say at the above uh, at the top of V is the yes. augmentation induced by the cobordism. Okay, so that's oh, what yeah. I meant by compatibility. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank it's you. All, yeah, it's always like this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, and so, um, so finally I have, so I get that my complex is homotopic to this, to this complex between the trivial cylinder over uh, lambda zero minus and this, uh, and this uh, V1 prime, but then okay, I should have turned the arrow in the other direction probably, but if I take those two trivial cylinder and I wrap, then wrapping again uh, induces isomorphism of complexes. So at the end, I get that my, my complex is uh, homotopic to the complex um, associated to those two trivial cylinders, which, which is just uh, the bilinearized Legendrian contact cohomology complex. And then I know that uh, the set of bilinearized Legendrian contact cohomology groups group is invariant by Legendrian isotopy. And I know that lambda zero minus and lambda one minus are horizontally displaceable. So in particular, lambda zero minus and lambda one minus tilde, which is just a translation of lambda one minus, are also horizontally displaceable. And then I can just push them apart and I have no generators anymore. So it implies a cyclicity. Okay. So that's, okay, that's it for this acyclicity. And now we have this, so now that we have this complex, we can define a product. So for this, I need to take three cobordisms and I will define a map from uh, the, co the complex associated to sigma one, sigma two, to the times the complex associated to sigma zero, sigma one, to the complex associated to sigma zero, sigma two. And again, I will define it by uh, like counting a lot of pseudolomorphic disk that will look like this. I will not describe everything because it would be 27 components because there are like three types of generators, but you can you can imagine yourself how it is defined. Here I give just one example. If I take two cards, uh, two two generators which are rep cards in the positive end, then I will have uh, I will define the product by all those uh, by counting all those different uh, rigid configurations. So in particular, the three first one, I count the three different types of uh, configuration to define 
the component of the product uh, which takes values in the cores in the positive end, then this is um, the component of the product which takes values in the intersection point generators, and the last one takes values in the cores in the negative end. So note that every time, um, like it, it could be weird that I can't, uh, like it can't, could look like uh, this is a broken disk, but it's actually not a broken, like it's not a broken disk arising as, as, as a, like in the boundary of a one dimensional moduli space, because I cannot, those two, those two curves, I cannot glue them. There, there's no, no gluing for those two. So it, it's actually rigid what I'm counting. Another example for if I take a chord in the positive end and an intersection point, I will count uh, those different. So this is counted by M plus this M, M2 zero and those two last for M2 minus. Okay, and how, um, I, I can briefly explain uh, how to um, prove the Leibniz rule for, uh, to, so to prove that I have a product. So the Leibniz rule is the following. And I, I, I will just give you some example of um, how, to, how to proceed. So if I take, Again, so if I take two, that's a two chord in the positive end. So this, uh, this, this component of the product with values in the chords in the positive end is defined by counting those three different types of curves. And now I can try to show uh, this first relation. So what is this first relation? I should say that this Leibniz rule, so this equation decomposes into three equations depending on which output we have or a chord in the positive end, an um, intersection point, or a chord in the negative end. So that's that's the equation with output in the positive end. So if I want to prove this equation, I can prove it by studying the boundary of the compactification of, of all those types of pseudomorphic disk. So what I mean, for example, here is that I have this uh, index zero disk, which is so the moduli space is just a compact zero dimensional manifold. And then this, this is a one dimensional manifold. So the boundary will just be the boundary of this one at the top times this zero dimensional thing. So I just uh, show you uh, this, um, how it looks like, let's say for the three first one, because there is some symmetry like those two, those two, the, the the, let's say, the broken curves arising arising as the generation of um, uh, of curves like this will uh, pretty much looks like those one, but just a symmetry. So this this is what happened for the for the three first um, configuration. So I have all those different kinds of degeneration, and then what do I do with all of this? The first thing I can we can remark is that some configuration will actually cancel. So those one cancel. Okay, this um, cancel. I mean, they will, would, they would, they would contribute the same algebraically. And I'm always working over Z two. So if it's counted twice, it's it means zero. So for example, this one, this configuration cancel with this one, and then this one this one here can sell with this one and this one just can sell with some other curves arising as in the boundary of the other modular space i'm not showing here so that's the first step and then the other remaining terms should contribute to the leibniz rule and that's for example i, I give you this example this those uh, those curves that i circle plus Plus, plus actually this one, which is like the symmetric of this one arising like in this model space, in, in this broken disk I'm not showing. Those terms are actually are exactly the one contributing to M2 plus uh, of M1 gamma two gamma one. Okay, and then, and then uh, this one with this one will, and with the other one that I'm not showing will contribute to M2 gamma two of M1 gamma one, and the last one, like this one, 
and this one and the other one will contribute to M1 plus of M2. So this would prove the first, like this, this equation. And then for all the other equation to prove Leibniz rule, it's always the same, the same thing to do. Like they are studying, like looking at all the possible broken disks, some of them cancel and the remaining one gives the Leibniz rule. Okay. And so as you can imagine, there is also a product. So now if I take, uh, concaten if I concatenate cobordism, I have a complex, but I also have, I can also define a product on this, uh, on this tensor product of the two, two complexes. No, I mean, uh, there's a question from Eleni. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, I didn't so, mean to al alarm me, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, uh, you are doing, of course, things over Z2, but do you expect those things to come with opposite sign to actually cancel uh, if you were to uh, look at orientations? I mean, or do you, do you expect them to contribute zero somehow altogether? Or? Um. I, I actually don't know. I'm very I bad with signs. I would okay. say, I mean, I think everything that I say here, I think it would, it, it should really work with uh, other coefficients than Z2, but, mm -hmm. but I'm very bad to compute signs. So I, I have never tried to compute some signs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so I can define I can define a product again by counting curves uh, uh, like with boundary on those uh, concatenated cobordism, and it uh, and actually the the transfer maps I defined before they they will preserve the product structures in homology. So I mean that they they satisfy this relation in in homology, and the way. Uh, I guess people who are used to those A infinity structure, they know uh, well how to do this. One way to do this is to define this map, like the kind of second order map of the transfer map and show that by studying also breaking curves uh, in the boundary of modular spaces, you show that it satisfies this relation, which is the second a infinity functor relation and when you so when you have this uh, this relation and you pass to homology you you just remain that some with some map which preserve the product in homology okay um okay so now i can um i, I can uh, talk about this continuation elements so as I said in the introduction, I have, uh, so I will take one cobordism and I take a very specific perturb copy of my cobordism and uh, I will prove that there is like, a, there will be some special generator that will be this continuation element. So I take sigma one to be a perturbation of sigma zero by a Morse function. So when I, when I, Okay, when I say this, I mean, I mean, I identify a small neighbor, like a small neighborhood of my cobordism sigma zero with the zero section of a, um, of a tangent space of T star sigma zero in such a way that in the, like in such a way that the positive end here is identified with a cylinder over the zero section of the um, cotangent space of lambda zero plus, but like under, well, anyway, under nice um, identification, I take um, um, this most perturbation of sigma zero by this most function satisfying that the critical points of the function are all contained in minus one, uh, in minus t, t times y, and they are, uh, and of, and of course they are in bijection with intersection points of sigma zero and sigma one. Then I want that on the cylindrical ends, my function f is given by exponential t f plus or minus minus some constant eta for some function f plus or minus, uh, so small function, small mass function defined on the Legendre and lambda zero 
plus lambda zero minus. So what, what it means, it means just that the cylindrical ends of sigma zero and sigma one will be just given by cylinder over a perturbed two copy of lambda zero minus and lambda zero plus. And I assume that I, I will assume that there is a unique, that this function big F admits a unique minimum on each filling component of sigma zero. Like I have never assumed that my um, cobordism is, uh, is connected. So it could be, uh, it could have several connected components, but on each filling component, I wanted to have a unique uh, minimum. And, and I want my function F to have no minimum on the components with non-empty negative end, but on those components with non-empty negative end, I want that the function, the most function f, admits a unique minimum on each connected component. So, um, uh, like a critical point of this function f minus or a critical point of the function f plus, they um, uh, they correspond to rep chords from a lambda one minus to lambda zero minus. So now I take, so my continuation element will be just the sum of those minima. And uh, the fact is that uh, this, this element is actually a cycle in the, in the Cthulhu complex of sigma zero, sigma one. And if I take any other cobordism, sigma two transverse to sigma zero and sigma one, the multiplication with this continuation element gives an isomorphism of complexes. And also the transfer maps will preserve this continuation element in homology. Um, so now I will give you some ideas of proof. I will not prove all, all, all the theorem, but just give you some idea of why this is true. So we can start by proving that this continuation element is a, is a cycle. So just for, for the presentation here, I just assume that there is just one connected component with non-empty negative end. And so my uh, continuation element is just this, it's just a, um, a small, the minimum of the, of the function F minus here in the negative end. So what I, I want to prove that M1 of this element E equals zero. So M1, I remember that it's like three, it has three components, the plus component, zero component and minus component. Uh, but by definition, um, the M plus vanishes on uh, generators that are not called in the positive end. So we just have to look at M10 and M1 minus. So let's, take a look at what we have. So uh, M so M1 minus it's defined by is defined by a count of a pseudo homomorphic strips like this with boundary on the negative cylindrical ends and with a negative asymptotic at this um, minimum E minus and a positive asymptotic to like we sum over all the positive uh, the, all, all, the, all the possible positive rep called asymptotic. So, and now we consider two different cases, like because the chords from uh, lambda one minus two lambda zero minus, they can be more scores. So meaning they are, they correspond to critical points of the function F minus, or they, they could be long chords. So it means just corresponding to pure chords of uh, the Legendrian lambda zero minus. So if, if it's a Morse code, if this beta is a Morse code, then, um, so then we use um, the result of uh, Ekholm et Nair Sabloff. So again, in this paper, duality exact sequence uh, for the Julians and manifolds. So if it's a Morse code, then it means like for, for action reason, there will be no pure rep code asymptotic again. This, so this time there will be no a lot of tentacles or to pure rep cause they they won't exist and then it means that such a strip is actually in one-to-one -one correspondence with gradient flow lines 
from the critical point corresponding to beta to this minimum, the gradient flow lines of the function f minus. But then it means that this, this beta will be an index one critical point. And there, if there is like one flow line flowing down to the minimum, there is another flow line and it has no other choice to flow on this minimum because I assume there is just one minimum of f minus. So it means that the contribution of such a this of such a chord beta is two, so it's zero. Okay, but then and then what if uh, the chord is not a Morse chord, but then you contribute? It's a it's a long chord, and in this case we have so again, Ekholmit Nayar Sablov tell us that such. A, there is a question from Shin Jin. Uh, okay. Thanks, beat me to it. Yes, go ahead, Shin. Oh, yeah, I just wonder if, is it possible to define a functor to uh, the real the Foucault category of uh, some new view feeding of your uh, contact manifold, why? Uh, because, uh, or, or product, or the product category, because your uh, cobordism plus uh, augmentation looks like a, a, a object, a, two, a pair of objects, because you have like this, uh, this uh, looks like a Lagrangian feeling of your negative end, and then and then adding this cobordism looks like another uh, Lagrangian object. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm just wondering if it's, hmm, if, it's to or maybe a, a functor from this to. Uh, so 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 each cobordism plus an augmentation looks like, I mean roughly <laughs> looks like a pair of objects in the uh, Fukai category. Maybe it maps each cobordism, such object to a pair of uh, objects in the And um, maybe a, a infinite, sorry, so. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, there could be some uh, more uh, evolved algebraic structure that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't know. The, 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 maybe the thought is uh, a infinity map. Yeah, yeah, like, but, uh, yeah, maybe. But, a infinity uh, functor. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, but oh, I'm just maybe curious. something to explore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, so okay, just to finish with this, um, if uh, yeah, so I said if beta is not a Morse chord, then the such uh, such strips are like such such curve are in one to one correspondence with. Um, generalized disks, so meaning uh, disk with boundary on r times lambda zero minus, and with some um, gradient flow line of f minus attached to the boundary, and then for rigidity reason, it, the, the pseudomorphic disk will be necessarily um, trivial strip over the chord beta, and then there are two ways the, this uh, gradient flow line could be attached to the boundary, or, or on this side, or on the other side. So meaning that the disk that we are looking at here is actually looking like like this or like this with one pure rep chord asymptotics, just one. And then uh, so then we will if if it's uh, this type we will augment beta with the with the augmentation of uh, lambda one minus. And if it's like this, we augment it with epsilon zero minus. But then I took sigma to be sufficiently close, sigma one to be sufficiently close to sigma zero in such a way that the, uh, the chicken of Eliasberg algebras of the negative end identify canonically and one augmentation of lambda zero minus induces an augmentation of lambda one minus. And I took this induced augmentation. So, um, epsilon zero minus equals epsilon one minus here. So it gives zero. So this gives that M one minus of, of this element E equals zero. And then it remains to look at this other term M zero of E. And this will be approximately the same argument, but before this, we, uh, we, we, change the chord to an intersection point by concatenating with this pair of cobordism v0, 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 v1, or in some other terms, we just wrap a little bit the negative end. So 
we wrap it a little bit to turn all the most rep chords into intersection points, but not more, like all the, the other chords, the long chord will remain long chord. But then in particular, this uh, small rep chord become an intersection point after wrapping. And then if we wrap just, just a little bit, the sigma one is still a most perturbation of the sigma zero. And this, this uh, map M, M0 counts such kind of disc, which after wrapping is just counting those floor strips. And again, like un under this one to one um, uh, bijection, there is uh, such the count of such disc correspond to the count of, um, of um, gradient flow lines. And then again, if I have one gradient flow line, I will have another one flowing down to the minimum and I have just one minimum, so it will give zero. So this uh, gives that, okay, I'm not still too late. This gives that, uh, so my continuation element is a cycle. And now I want to prove that that's, uh, that multiplying by this element is an isomorphism. So I, I just, uh, it's, it's done in a few steps. The, the first step is to decompose the Cthulhu complex into four different types of generators instead of uh, three. But this is just that I will, um, I will separate the negative action intersection point and positive action intersection point. Well, even though if I have not defined to you what is the action, there are like positive and negative action. And then I will order my generators in the blue part in decreasing action and generators in the uh, orange part in increasing action. And I show that the matrix of this multiplication is lower triangular with ones on the diagonal. So, or like, yeah, identity in the diagonal, but uh, okay, why I can, I can say this because I, like there is a canonical identification. Sigma one is very close to Sigma zero. So there is a canonical identification of generators um, between this complex and this one. So just to, to give you one, uh, one example here, um, for the first, uh, the first column on the matrix, let's say. So I took, I took a red cord in the positive end. And when I multiply by this um, continuation element, I have, again, three terms, like the plus term, the zero term, and the minus term. So the plus term counts uh, such types of, um, of curves, the zero term, this one, and the minus term, those uh, two different types of curve. So I will focus. I will focus on the first one here, because I would like to prove that uh, m two plus that that this uh, I will I will have here the generator corresponding to this one in the in the Cthulhu complex associated to sigma zero or uh, sigma zero sigma two. So again, I have two two different possibilities. Like, or my beta my beta. Um, uh, uh, chord is a Morse chord or it's not a Morse chord. So if it's a Morse chord, then for, for index reason, it must be a minimum of the Morse function F plus. And then again, by Econ etnayer sabloff this is uh, identified with gradient flow lines of the function uh, big F. Well, it's not exactly Econ et I, I, I have to, well, doing some wrapping, we can prove that it's uh, identified with such gradient flow lines. So then, and then what? So here I have one gradient flow line and here I have a um, disk which will uh, correspond to generalized disk because here it's a minimum and it's exactly the same situation as before, as we saw before. So in this case, we will have here the generator, we will have here the chord uh, gamma zero two, which canonically corresponds to gamma one two. And if beta is not a Morse chord, then the action of this output is much smaller than the action of the chord gamma zero two. So it means that this M two plus of gamma one two with the continuation element will be gamma zero two, which correspond to coefficient one in the matrix, plus some other things that are, that have um, smaller action. 
okay, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like it's also always such kind of um, consideration. And um, okay, so that that's the way to prove that uh, we have that this multiplication by continuation element is an isomorphism. And just to finish in one minute, so. Uh, as you can well imagine that after the product, you just count more and more curves and you define uh, those uh, higher order maps. And again, by studying uh, boundary of uh, compactification of moduli spaces, uh, one can prove that uh, those all those maps uh, satisfy an infinity equation. And then when I concatenate cobordism, um, I can also define higher order transfer maps that will satisfy the A infinity functor equation. And once we have all those data, we can just we can define A infinity category um, using localization. So maybe maybe I should uh, stop. I'm a bit. Um, maybe I should. Uh, yeah, I, I would just say. Uh, well, maybe I should stop here. Um, we use like uh, this, uh, okay, I, I'm just following in this, to define this infinity category, I'm just following the Gana Trapardon chain, the construction of the Rab Fouquet category of the Liville sector, taking some representative of Hamiltonian isotopic classes, choosing some cofinal sequence for each cobordism. And every, and of course I will, I will choose a sequence to make appear those continuation elements and then and then I define my category by uh, taking a, yeah, anyway, a directed category and uh, like localizing by the cones of the continuation element to make those continuation elements become quasi isomorphism. And, and maybe I will stop here. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a bit late. Oh, no, you're right on time. So thank you very much for the talk. Questions? Um, I had, had a question. So now that we have this a infinity category, I, I guess the wrapped version or the unwrapped version, like do you do we, do you know anything about formality? Like is there are there any examples or it would be interesting to find examples of like some cobordisms where we know that the the say that the endomorphism a infinity algebra or something is not formal. Is there anything like that known or mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, that would be interesting, but uh, no, no, I, I, I don't know. I have, um, it should be, uh, I mean, I should try to make more computation now that I have this, but I haven't done a lot of computation yet, but uh, yeah, yeah I no, I actually don't know. Yeah, um, if, that, uh, if there are some examples like this. I guess, yeah, I guess a simpler question would just be like, are there any like cobordisms or collections of cobordisms where we can like, where there might be hope to like, kind of write down the, describe the full infinity category in some explicit way. Well, yeah, well, but I mean, I I don't know. I, I guess yeah. A first step to, I, I I mean to understand to compute a category maybe for like a given um, contact manifold, but it would be it would be good maybe first to have some to find some generators of this category and then to be able to compute something but uh, but yeah. yeah i haven't um yeah it would be good to do this at some point but i haven't done it yeah i don't know um any any other questions from the audience Well, if not, um, yeah. let's, 
thank the speaker again and then uh, we can also stick around for like more informal session if anyone has any other questions. So, so yeah, thank you again. Thank you.